Jamie Michelle Fraley was born on March the 5th, 1986 in Gaston County, North Carolina. From the onset, she was somebody who defied the odds. She was a sickly newborn who many believed wouldn't live past the age of one, but she did. She was later diagnosed with bipolar and anxiety disorders. She took medication to manage both and is said to have responded well. Jamie was a firecracker with a big heart and a passion for helping others. While known to be feisty at times, she was a sweet and intelligent girl. This led her to pursue a career as a substance abuse counsellor, for which she was studying part-time at Gaston College, alongside getting her GED. In 2006, Jamie began dating Ricky Simmons Jr. Her family said she was very much in love with him and eventually the two became engaged. However, Simmons had a criminal history and after several earlier arrests for petty crimes, in early 2007 he was sentenced to 15 months in state prison for theft. Fraley continued to visit and interact with him while he was incarcerated. On April the 7th, 2008, Jamie came down with a stomach virus. It was severe enough that she twice sought treatment at a local hospital that day. As she had no driver's license, she relied on social services workers and friends and family to take her to and from hospital. When Jamie returned from the hospital, her friend picked up a dog Jamie had been babysitting for her and offered to drop off her prescription at a local drugstore. Between 8pm and 10pm, Jamie decided she needed to return to the hospital, unhappy with her previous diagnosis, as she didn't have a driver's licence or a method of transportation, she called her finances father, Ricky Simmons Sr., for a ride. When she arrived at the hospital, she was told the wait would be three hours. She decided to leave and called another neighbour to ask for a ride back to her apartment. Jamie got home around midnight and called her mother. Concerned, Kim Fraley asked if she wanted picking up the next day. Her daughter declined, saying she had an appointment with the Social Security Administration. Just two hours later, however, Jamie called a friend and told her that someone was going to pick her up and take her back to the hospital. However, she didn't say who that person was and abruptly hung up when they pulled up outside. Jamie never appeared at the hospital that third time. After Jamie missed an important appointment the next day, her family went to her apartment to see if she was alright. They did not find her there, the door was locked. Inside, they found her wallet, purse, keys and identification, but not her cell phone. Nothing else was missing, there were no signs of a struggle, so they concluded she had left willingly, wherever she had gone. Unable to locate her, they called the police and reported her missing. Gaston County Police launched a major investigation, putting all of its investigators on the case, with three of them devoted to it full-time and requesting assistance from both the state's Bureau of Investigation and the FBI. Two days after Jamie's disappearance, utility workers discovered her phone at an intersection roughly a mile from her apartment. By the time the phone was turned over to the police, too many people had handled it for any usable evidence such as fingerprints to be gained from the exterior. Searching through its call records, police found that several calls have been made at 4.30am, however they turned out to be from the list of calls Jamie had dialed earlier and were not connected to the disappearance. A call that was made to the phone at 5am but it could not be determined who it was from. Ricky Simmons Jr, Jamie's finance, was still imprisoned at the time of her disappearance, so investigators ruled him out as a suspect. 
They quickly refocused on his father, Ricky Simmons Sr. He too had a criminal record including six years in prison for manslaughter in the 1980s after strangling a girlfriend to death. Simmons Sr. lived in the same apartment complex as Jamie, just two doors away and did maintenance work there. He had driven her to the hospital the second time on the day she disappeared, making him one of the last people to see her that day. Reportedly, he was obsessed with Jamie. He refused to take a lie detector test. Two months to the day after Jamie's disappearance, however, the investigation into Simmons ended with his death. On June the 7th, Kim, a former girlfriend who had recently obtained a protective order against him, noticed a foul odour in her car. It persisted and the next day she opened the trunk. Inside, Kim found Simmons' body. Police investigating this found he had a set of her keys. A week earlier, Kim's purse had been stolen from her car. The cause of death was ruled to be accidental heat stroke. During the previous days, the temperatures had been extremely high. Police theorised that Simmons had used the keys to let himself into the trunk with the intent of ambushing Kim at some point, letting himself out with the working emergency latch. When heat exhaustion set in, however, it was possible that he had panicked and forgotten how to use it, remaining in the trunk to die. After completing their investigation into Simmons' death, detectives told the media that he had been considered a person of interest in Jamie's disappearance. Members of both the Fraley and Simmons families believe Ricky Sr. had taken useful information about what happened to Jamie to his grave. Her mother Kim, who had supplemented the official investigation with efforts of her own, recalled crying when she learned of his death. <laughs> 